is, yes he is, yes he is. Some of y'all too young remember that song, God is the good God? Yes, he is. God is the good God. Y'all remember that? Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Taisha, what you know about that? Hallelujah. Oh, exactly. Yep, they'll, they'll give it to you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. God is awesome. We love him. How many of y'all we love? Amen. You know that there has to be, um, um, I guess what we call a, a reckoning, I guess. What is a reckoning? What is a reckoning, Pastor? By the way, definition. Like settling up something. What is it? Mm -hmm. yeah, that's the settle thing. To settle things, huh? Okay. So there has to be a reckoning or a um, or a um, a resolution or to put an end to things, right? Sort of. There's got to be an end. And the end has got to be the end of us. Are y'all here? Yeah. There has to come an end of us. When I say end of us, I'm talking personally. Yes. Not an end of your wife, not an end of your husband, an end of you. Because if I wait, if I'm waiting on somebody else to end, mm -hmm. then my ending is delayed. Are y'all here? Yes. Who said I die daily? Paul. Paul. He said he die often. How often? Daily. daily. Did Paul say I wait on Peter to die? He didn't say that, did he? I went on Barnabas to die. No. He said, I die daily. He wasn't waiting on nobody else to die. He said, I die daily. Yes. What do you mean he died? He mean his fleshly nature diminished on a daily uh -huh. basis. Yes. He meant my consciousness in the carnal realm gets smaller and smaller every day. Yes. Notice in, you ain't got to turn to it, but in Philippians chapter 2, um, I'm going to say Philippians chapter 3. Let's say it like this. The book of Philippians. In the book of Philippians, Paul said, I have not yet taught myself as perfect or, or, or as uh, attained. attained or read that. Forget it. Let's go to it. I'm up. I got the mic. I can do that kind of stuff. Let's go to it. I'm going to say Philippians 3, 11. I'm guessing. I know I'm close, though. Very, very good. Is 11 close? Yeah, we need to back up one. Well, we got 10. Uh, All right, 10. And let's see. I think we got to back up one more. Okay, start, start. Let us know where you're starting from. But I want y'all to hear this because Paul is speaking specifics here. Okay, let's start with 7. Okay. But what things were gained to me, those I counted lost for Christ. Yea, doubtless, and I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do count them but dumb, that I may win Christ, and be found in him not having mine mm -hmm. own mm -hmm. righteousness. He said he count all this stuff as what? Dumb. dumb. As dumb. D-U-N-G. Give me another word for dumb. Boo-boo. <laughs> Boo-boo. Dookie. Yeah, we can say it. Give me another word for it. Poop. Boo. Boo. Excrement, <laughs> feces. <laughs> in, 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 in English, in England, they got a word. What is it? Who, who's scared to say it? The word they call it England. Oh, <laughs> Long Island. Oh, I'll say it. <laughs> no, don't say it. Don't say it. Anyway, read. Oh, I'm sorry. It got distracted. Yea, doubtless, uh -huh. and I count all things but lost for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus. Oh, I said all my education. All my great, so to speak, accomplishments, mm -hmm. I get saved and I find out they're worth nothing. Yes, yes. Knowledge without Christ equals zero. Yes. Three. For whom I have suffered the loss of all things and do count them but dung that I may win Christ uh -huh. and be found in him not having mine own righteousness which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith. The law gives you your own righteousness. You know why? Because you're working. Yep, yeah. God ain't working. I'm working because I'm keeping the law. I'm doing this. 
I pay my tithe. Remember that guy? Yes. I pay my tithe unlike this heathen here. Mm -hmm. yeah. He was working. That wasn't God. That was him. Read. That I may know him uh -huh. and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being Be made conformable unto his death. Keep reading. If by any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead. Now here we go. Now watch what he says. Listen to this. Not as though I had now, already. Hold it. Listen, people. We got to understand when you read the word of God, there's a progression going on. There's a progression going on. If I write you a letter today, I promise you 10 years from now, if I write you another letter, I'm not going to be at the same level I was that I wrote to you 10 years ago. Amen. There may be some things that I might clarify. Uh, you may say, well, you didn't believe this 10 years ago. Well, 10 years ago, I was not that mature as I am today. Amen. So notice what Paul said. Not as though I've already attained. Is that what he said? That's what he said. Read. Not as though I had already attained. Uh -huh. Either were already perfect. I'm not perfect. Did Paul say that? I have not attained maturity. I'm not attained in the sonship. I've not reached maturity. Read. But I follow after. However... I follow after that. If that I may apprehend that. That I may apprehend that for which also I am apprehended of Christ Jesus. Amen. Good enough. Paul said, I want to take hold. I want to take hold of the thing that Christ took hold of me for. Right? Yes. Now, two years later, he wrote 2 Timothy and he said, I am now ready to be offered. Mm -hmm. And plain English, Paul said, I have attained now. Now I'm mature. I have experienced the spiritual death. Now I'm ready for natural death because I've done everything that God has called me to do. He said, henceforth is laid up for me what a crown of righteousness that everyone will receive that does his will. That's in 2 Timothy, if you want to read it. And then he said, I'm ready to be offered. Yes. So what Paul said, between two years, he said, I'm not yet attained. I'm not perfect. Two years later, I'm perfect. Yes. What happened between those two years? There had to be some growth, but our problem is we're afraid to say what the Bible has said. Come on. We have a fear about speaking the word of God over ourselves. We let people around us dictate our conversation. Yes, we do. You know why? Because we want to have friends. We want to be good with people. At some point in our life, we got to get to the place where, you know what, I don't care. Don't nobody on the earth like me. we got to get there. You're not trying to make enemies. You're not, your goal is not to be not liked. But we have to accept the fact that everybody, the masses, are not going to be in agreement with the word of God. And some of those masses may include people with your same last name. Mm -hmm. Am I right or right? Yes, yes, yes. So we don't go out to make enemies. It's not our goal to be enemies with anybody. But it's our goal to be a friend of God. One verse said the common mind is what? Enmity. Enmity against God. Now, Genesis chapter 1. Let's read something. And I put on this, on the video, I talked speech recognition. Speech recognition, we thought was a new thing. Mm. Oh, it's so glorious, isn't it? You just talk into your phone. Sometimes, you know, you get the words wrong. You know, one pastor showed me where she was, uh, she was trying to send a message to one of her sisters, and she spoke it into the phone, and she didn't even look at it, she just sent it. Uh-oh. And, and, the, and the sister wrote back and said, Doctor, did you mean to say this? <laughs> and she showed it to me. She said, look what I said to her. Woo! It was wretched. And I said, what? And I laughed so hard, I said, well, I said, well, speech recognition, mm -hmm. and we think it's a new thing, because when you speak into something, it obeys you, right? What, 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 what's, what's the term to get the speech recognition to, uh, I don't know what the Apple uses it's, are, something, something. It's called a wake-up word. A wake-up what? A wake-up word. A wake-up word. Oh, yes, yes, when you wake up the device. On Android, it's okay, Google, or hey, Google. O on the iPhone, it's something diminishing or smaller. I don't know what it is, but I know it's something less. Now, um. Uh, <laughs> hey, Siri. Hey, Siri. Know what it is? Okay, so now, now here. What is it? Hey Siri. Hey Siri. Now, now, but, but what you're doing, you're activating or you're waking up the speech recognition on your device. Am I right? Now, now, how long has speech recognition been available on these devices? Think about this. How long? On these devices? On these cell phones? 
I may be too old then because I didn't know. I, I had a cell phone since the 90s. Wasn't no speech recognition. Okay? Speech recognition on a cell phone where you can speak into it and have to do something probably what? Six, seven years? Eight years? Longer? Proof. junior high, mm -hmm. she used to go onto her phone and say, call Carson, who is my dad. Uh -huh. And my brothers and sisters always used to laugh at her, but now, looking back at it, she was just ahead of their time. It was a silver Nokia phone. Okay, and it had speech recognition. It did. Okay, all right, so. I just looked it up. Uh -huh. No one even knows something. We ain't, we ain't paying that no attention. I'm glad they can't hear you talking. I'm glad can't nobody hear you talking. Stop it. Okay, we're not going with that. That's before my daddy was born. My daddy was born in 1933. Nah, put that down. See, that's the problem with it. Okay, so, so let, me, let me fix this. Modern day speech recognition. Well, you can talk to Google or to Siri, because Siri ain't been out no 20 years. Siri's young. Siri ain't been about what, 19 years old? How old is Siri? 15, 10? Siri's a little girl. Siri's a little girl, and Google ain't that old either. Google ain't that old. I remember when Yahoo started. I remember when Google, I remember when Gmail first came out. So. These things are fairly new to this realm. Now you might have some older ones that were back way back in the day that worked. But now speech recognition is a big thing. There's software called Dragon Naturally Speaking. Who's heard of that? Dragon Naturally Speaking, you speak it to your computer, instead of typing on Microsoft Word, it types for you. Now what's the big deal about it? The big deal about speech recognition is your voice is the authority. Your voice is dictating what happens. And we think that that's real deep, in which it is kind of, but the issue is, when you look in the Bible, speech recognition is from the beginning. Yes. Am I right or right? But notice this. All things happen around the spirit. And, and, and when we speak things, we speak, the Bible says, from the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So when you speak things, you're speaking from where? The abundance of your heart. The problem with that is, in Hebrews, go to Hebrews chapter 10. I'm going to show you the problem with speaking from the abundance of your heart. There's a problem with that. And, and it's, it's a true statement, but the problem is, everybody's the abundance of all of our hearts is not pure. How y'all feeling? H-O-T. Yes. One time. Hit me. James Brown said, go down one. Um, Look at, look at Hebrews 10. Now what, listen, listen to what it says, Hebrews 10 and 2. Watch specifically what this says. What does it say? Hebrews chapter 10, verse 2. For then would they not have ceased to be offered. Well, read verse 1. Okay. Starting with verse 1. Uh -huh. For the law having a shadow of good things to come. Uh -huh. The law of the shadow of good things to come. Thank you. Read. And not the very image of the things. Uh huh can never with those sacrifices which they offered year by year continually make comers well, unto perfect. It, it, thanks to God, there's a huge problem with the body of Christ. Half of the body can't let go of the law. They need it. Mm -hmm. They need it. They don't know how to live by the Spirit. They don't know how to flow in the Spirit. They don't know how to swim in the Spirit. They need someone with a chain around their neck. Yes. They need it because they don't know how to flow. So the scripture said the law is a shadow, and it said it'll never perfect you. Is that what it said? Right. Yes. You will never become mature trying to keep the law. You can't do it. That's the Bible. Get mad at Paul. Oh, well, whoever wrote the book of Hebrews. Read the next verse. Watch what it says. For then would they not have ceased to be offered, because that, because that the worshippers once purged. Hear this real clear. The worshippers what? Once purged. purged should have had no more conscience of sins. Why do we still have sin conscience? You know why? Because we haven't been purged. If we were thoroughly purged or let God thoroughly cleanse us, we won't have a sin conscience. You won't have to wake up every morning and repent. Come on. You won't have to repent daily just in case. Because mm -hmm. 
because you won't have a sin conscience. Or uh, that's okay. It don't matter if don't nobody like it. The truth is the truth. We are to be exactly like Yeshua. You know the Lord didn't wake up in the morning. The first thing he did was, "Please forgive me of all my sins." Amen. Amen. He didn't have a sin conscience because where he came from, there was no sin. Amen. He had a consciousness of holiness and righteousness. And when we get saved for real, we'll have the same consciousness. Did I say we wasn't saved? No. That's when we get saved for real. Mm-hmm. We don't believe the scriptures. We don't. And we try to hold everybody else hostage to our unbelief. Yes. yes. 2 Corinthians 5 17 says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's what? A new, A new creation. creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things. But why are we still holding people accountable to things they did before they got saved? Why are we still doing that, saints? Why? We do it daily. I have people on a daily basis call me and try to talk about somebody about something before they got saved. Man, read something. 2 Peter 1 9. 2 Peter 1 9. 2 Peter 1 9. What does it say? It says, But he that lacketh these things is blind and cannot see afar off. And has forgotten that he was purged was from what? his old purged from his old sins. People, if we want to have perfect speech recognition, we got to be purged first. Yes. Because without the purging, you're going to be speaking from the abundance of your heart, and the abundance of your heart may not be pure. Amen. What Romans 12 and 2 say? We can almost quote that. Yes. Be not conformed to this world. Be not conformed to this world, but be you a transformed heart. By the, By the renewing of your mind. When your mind is renewed, you won't have a sin conscience. When you don't have a sin conscience, then you don't you don't look or expect sin first. Y'all feel that? Yes. If I see Pastor Bobby walking out of somebody's house and I know it's a single sister and I don't have a sin conscience, I won't expect sin to have happened. Amen. Amen. Are y'all here? Amen. My thought would be, oh wow, what if I wonder if she must need some help or something. Praise God. Thank God that he went to help her. What I don't know is her whole family is in there and they called him for prayer. But a sin conscious right away expects sin to have happened. Am I right or right? Yes. So when we don't have a sin conscious, the Bible says to the pure. All things are pure. When you are pure for real, then when people bring you garbage, you won't be waste management. When you're pure for real, when people bring you garbage, you'll give it right back to them. God, stop it. I smell the stench of the garbage before it comes out of your mouth. Get that mess away from me. But it was my best friend. Well, they ceased to be my best friend that day. Mm-hmm. We've got to get ourselves to a place to where we're more concerned about God and how he feels about us than we are about anybody else. We need another verse past body. Genesis chapter 1. Watch what the word says. I want you to read. I want you to read them all. all right. At, yes. Not the whole verse. Just the beginning. Yes. All right. He's going to go to Genesis chapter 1, start at verse 3. Genesis chapter I want to read verse 3, verse 6, verse 9, 11, 14, 20, 24, 26, and 29. Amen. What they say? All right. Starting with verse 3. And God said. Verse 6. And God said. 9. And God said. 11. And God said. 14. And God said. 20. And God said. 24. And God said. 26. And God said, 29, and God said. Now, I know there's one more, but he was talking to somebody on that one. So I'm talking when he's speaking to the atmosphere. Nine times. And God what? Said. Now, when you look the word said, a moderate in, in the Hebrew, when you look at the word said, you will see that it's a thought and a command. It's a little more than that, but it's a thought and a command. So the, the said began in the mind of God. So before God said, let there be light, it had already happened in the mind of God. It, all, it was already here. Mm-hmm. The manifestation in this realm appeared when he spoke it into this atmosphere. You know why? Because God has commanded that in this atmosphere, words have authority. Yes. That's the law of God. The law of God is you speak it in this atmosphere. The scripture said that Yahshua knew their thoughts before they spoke Am I right? But however, God wants us to speak. Although he knows what we think, he wants us to speak because this atmosphere is dictated by speech recognition. 
Am I right or right? Right. So I can you know, I can tell you that I love you all day long. But if my actions say I don't, it don't matter. Mm -hmm. Mark 11, 22. Watch what the word says. We, we, got, we got things so twisted, and I believe that it's time for us, as people of God, to mark our calendar, to mark the date and time, and refuse to continue to be the same. Amen. The whole body of Christ is insane. If we keep on doing the same old thing and expecting God to do something different, we are insane. Amen. What did I say? Mark 11. Read. Mark 11, verse 22. And Jesus answering said unto them, Have faith in God. Have what? Faith in God. Now y'all know he didn't say that. Right. He did not say, Have faith in God in the original language. That's not what he said. What did he say, Elder Gloria? He said, Have the faith of have God. Have the faith of God. Have God's faith. Now, what do you mean, have God's faith? So does God believe that he received? Does God blab it and grab it, name it and claim it, profess it and possess it? Does God do that? No. So when he said have the faith of God, what is he saying? Have the faith of God, which ain't faith at all. Ooh, man. It's a whole nother level and a whole nother realm. When John was writing the book of Revelation, wasn't nobody talking. Look through the book of Revelation. And it said that so-and-so said, and the angels worshiped, and they said, and they said, no lips were moving, people. No tongue was in their mouth declaring anything. Oh, Pastor, you don't lost it. I have. I have. Paul said, I'm a fool for Christ. Did he say that? Yeah. I joined him. Officially. <laughs> now, in the book of Revelation, when John was writing the book of Revelation, God wasn't showing John, let me put it into perspective. He wasn't showing John things that were going to happen. <laughs> Y'all feel that? He wasn't showing John the future. He took John to the future, and John was looking at what was happening. Yes. There was no future event. And when, when the angels bowed down and cried hallelujah unto the Lord, they weren't using their mouth. Their spirit was portraying the words. Because yes. yes. in the spirit realm, you don't have to open your mouth to say nothing because everything is known. Hallelujah. Yes. If I don't like you and we're in the spirit, you know it. Yes. You know it. Oh, thank God for the earth realm. Thank God for the earth realm because there'd be some people getting slapped right now. <laughs> Hallelujah. Oh, come on back here, Apostle. Now, now, um, check this out. And, and when God spoke and said, let there be light, what's the next line say? And there was light. Why? Why? Because when you're pure and you're holy and your heart and your mind is pure and holy and your conscience is purged, when you say something, the atmosphere has no choice. Because the atmosphere has been commanded by God to obey purity, to obey righteousness. Look at Yeshua, walking along, mind his own business. Mm -hmm. Mind his own business. There's a man named Simeon, possessed with legions of demons. Yep. Yeshua didn't say the word. Did he say anything? Yep. No. His atmosphere, everything around him, the air he breathed, everything around him was holy. The man just screamed out and said, oh, son of David, have you come to persecute me? I know who you are. I'm ah, just talking. The Lord ain't said a word. Why? Because his presence was demanding attention. He was holy. Even in his, his presence was holy. That's how pure he was. And for, for those of us who don't believe we can get there, we have a problem. I believe we can get exactly to where Yahshua was. Even though all the things that have happened, all the flaws in our life, anybody here ever made a mistake? Once. Anybody made a mistake? <laughs> Did you say one? Yeah, he said once. <laughs> okay. <laughs> he threw me off. But we all have made mistakes, right? We've made mistakes before. Now, the, the issue is, when people forgive us, we worry and wonder did they really forgive us when really it don't matter. Because if you tell me you forgave me and you didn't, that's on you. Hallelujah. Yes. yes. That's on you. But the issue or the main problem or a worse problem is the fact that we cannot forgive ourselves. Amen. And when we do forgive ourselves, people say, yeah, like he, he did nothing. Right. 
You want me to be held hostage? Mm -hmm. Him. You know what he did last week? Act like he ain't there. He got the nerve to speak in tongues. I bind them tongues now in Jesus' name. Make his tongue stick to the roof of his mouth, Lord. What? Y'all don't think people do that? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. yes. <laughs> because they want you to be punished. Yeah. They want you to be punished. But the issue is God has forgiven us for real. What does Isaiah 43, 25 say? I'm almost done. I just believe that we have to come to a point where we make our mind up that this is the day. And I'm not going backwards no more, no matter what happened. It don't matter what happened yesterday, what happened the day before. It hurts. Yes, we feel it. It's painful. But we have to go forward. We have to. What verse 20, 25 says? Isaiah 43, 25. Isaiah 43, 25. I, even I, am he that blotteth out thy transgressions for mine own sake, and will not remember thy sins. What, what God says he won't do, he will not remember your sins. God says he won't remember your sins, right? Like, it's like the uh, it's like the young preacher that asked the old preacher. The old preacher was preaching, and he was really getting down and doing good and saying that God will forgive me for anything. And he went on and made a whole message out of it. A couple weeks later, young preacher walks up to me and say, "Oh Rev, you so deep, you so deep, and you said God is so deep. Tell me if you so deep, what was the last sin you committed?" And the old preacher says, I don't know, and neither does God. <laughs> why? Because God said what? I will not remember. So if God ain't remembering, why are we? If God has erased somebody's past, why are we bringing it up? What is in me that I can't let it go? What is that? What is that in me? That's a sin conscience. My conscience needs to be purged. Cut the result. Look up the word purge. Go to Hebrews 10 and 2 and read the definition for the word purge. Listen to what this says. We, we need to allow God to purge us and then we need to walk in it. Yeah, it's painful, but guess what? You'll get used to it. Just like you got used to doing all the other stuff, you'll get used to living right if you do it long enough. And it'll feel good to you. The Bible says the way of a transgressor is hard. Yes. Yeah, yeah, the more you transgress, it's hard. But when you love living right, then living right will become easy. Is that the right verse? Yes. What is that? Uh, the definition of purged. Uh -huh. To cleanse uh -huh. of filth or impurity, etc. Uh -huh. To prune trees and vines from useless... Why do you prune trees and vines? Because the useless shoots take energy that the other shoots could use. Exactly. And to use to bring forth more fruit. Yes. So purging means to take away all of the thoughts that are no good. Keep reading. One more. Metaphorically, from guilt or to expiate. To expiate. I know what that means. Expiate means. What do you mean, Pastor Bobby? I'm ready to tell you. Anybody know what expiate means? All right, what, what do you mean, Pablo? It seems, sounds like expiate means to, to, to do away with. That's what it sounds like. Right, I'm with you. What do you mean, Pastor Bobby? All right, expiate. To atone for guilt or sin. To atone for guilt or sin. So to make one again, to restore. To bring restoration. And that's what the Lord has did by his blood. Notice the scripture said about the shedding of blood, there's no remission of sins. And so we don't, we, we have to understand when mother was talking, the elder was talking this morning about the blood and about communion, that blood actually we have accepted his blood as a transfusion for our own blood. Are y'all here? So then when our mind is really there and we're really set, then no one can pull us from where we are. We've got to make our mind up though that the day has to begin, that they have to start, that we will no longer have a sin conscience. But we got people all around us every day talking negative. Come on. Talking negative about somebody, saying somebody did this, somebody did that, somebody did this, somebody did that. And you know what I praise God for? I really praise God, and this is the truth. I praise God that I don't get those phone calls. I don't get, have you heard? Did you hear? I used to get all those phone calls years ago. I don't get those calls no more. I don't get, and I don't even try, I'm just telling the truth. I don't get those calls no more. If you're listening, don't call me with it. I don't want to hear, have you heard? No. I don't like hearing things through the grapevine. 
Hallelujah. So we don't, we don't want to hear it through the grapevine, right? right? We want to hear it from the word of God. That was a little inside joke between me and God. So now, now, understand, understand. Our mind has to be pure. Our conscience needs to be perfect. And we can start today. Because if we think that things are going to change and we remain the same, it doesn't happen like that. Notice Yahshua said you shall have whatsoever so you say. say. Notice he said you shall have whatsoever you say. So the reason why you say it is because you have it. Because my mind has been renewed, my conscience has been purged, therefore I have it. That's why I say it. People can't say these things because they don't have these things. If your mind is not renewed and your conscience is not purged, you cannot speak that which you don't have. It'll just be empty words coming out of your mouth. James says, show me your faith without your works, and I'll show you my faith by my works. Faith produces something. It's a production. It improves something to the atmosphere. So we got to get to that place to where it doesn't matter. I'm going. There was a song years ago. It said, I'll go if I have to go by myself. I bet you don't remember that one. I'll go, y'all remember that? If I have to go by myself. If my mama don't go, if my daddy don't go, if my sister don't go, if my brother don't go, I'll go. If I have to go by myself. By myself? The choir song. Talk to you Talk to you Well. <laughs> Hallelujah. But that's the goal. The goal is to love as Christ loved. To forgive as Christ forgave. He said a new commandment I give you. What was the new commandment? Love that you love one another as, I have, as you. I have loved you. You want to keep that law? You want to keep the law? Keep that one. Love people the way Christ has loved us. Mm -hmm. Keep that law. That would be a great one to keep. So now, there's a new commandment. Love one another as I have loved you. So that means the way Christ forgives me, the way Christ loves me, is where I'm, I should respond to other people. Mm -hmm. Then I should love you like Christ loves me. Why do I want people to be punished? Why is it that I want people to be hurt? What is that? What is it in me that I want somebody to go down? That's what they did. I told them. They didn't listen to me. Now look at them. What is that? Even though you told them and they didn't listen and they fell off the bridge or fell off the cliff, you don't say, look at like I hope he busts his head when he hit the what? <laughs> what is it? Yeah. <laughs> Hope he bust, bust his head to the white knee. What, what is in us that makes us rejoice at the demise of another spirit-filled person? What is in us? Even though I told you and you wouldn't listen, I should not want you to fall down because you wouldn't listen to me. How many times have God spoke to us and we didn't listen? Amen. And God didn't wish for our demise. Love one another as I have loved you. We have to love people like Christ loves us. Now, yeah, I know. I hear you. I know it's tough. Some people are hard to love. <laughs> I'm just going to be honest with you. Some people are challenging. They be challenging you. But we must base it on Christ's love for us and not them. Because if I can love you regardless of who you are and what you do, then I'm loving you like Christ loves. Look, does Christ love me tomorrow? Yes. Does Christ love you tomorrow? Yes. Does he love you next week? Yes. Now, next week I haven't gotten here yet, has it? No. But does Christ love you in, in uh, July of 2021? Does Christ love you? Yes. How do you know? Because he's love. How do you know that he loves you in July of 2021? Prove that to me. What is it? He's sovereign. He's sovereign? Yeah, I get that, but we, give it to me. I want the for dummies. He's the same yesterday. That don't mean he loves me. Show me where he said he loves me. Thank you. His love is everlasting. His mercies are new every morning. Am I right or right? I will never leave you, nor will I forsake you. Is that what he said? Behold, I'm with you always, even until the end. So he changes not. I'll give you that one. Now, if he loves me in July of 2021, this is January, correct? Mm -hmm. So from January to July, think you might make a mistake or two? <laughs> That's about to say, nah. <laughs> my point, that's not my point, right? My point is, although God knows 
how many mess ups you're going to have. He still loves you. Y'all feel that? So although somebody mess up or they cross us or they do us wrong some kind of way, we still have to operate in God's love. If we see people from a godly viewpoint, then we'll love them from a godly viewpoint. But the reason why we don't love people from a godly viewpoint is because we see them from our own viewpoint. If we can see them as God sees them, then we know how to love them. We know how to love them. We know how to, to uh, manifest the nature of Yeshua to them, regardless what they do and say. And I'm working on that because I be getting tried daily. I be getting tried daily. I'm working on it too. And I, I mean, I'm talking about at the grocery store, the gas station, people delivering stuff to me, and I'm just, man, I be talking, you know, <laughs> hey, what are you doing? You know, and you know, it ain't no sin or nothing, but it ain't righteousness either. Do y'all feel what I'm saying? Yes. I got a certain way, and I'm, I'm done after this. I, I, I order from Amazon.com on purpose because I want because they donate to the church. However, sometimes they sit stuff right at the front door. My delivery instruction says put the package behind. I have two pillars behind one of the pillars so nobody can see it. Plain and simple. Mm-hmm. But some people just run up, drop the door, and leave. And I, and I open the door and say, "Hey, <laughs> what you doing? What my delivery instruction? I made one guy read it to me. Read it to me." Put the package behind the pillars. Okay, is that behind the pillar or is that the front door? That's the front door, so can you put the package where I said, please? No, am I wrong for that? No, but I can do it in a better tone. Y'all feel that? I don't have to talk like Apostle Webster. (laughs) You know what I mean? I can just say, oh, excuse me, sir. I can be real humble about it. Couldn't I? (laughs) Okay, and that's what I'm doing. So y'all pray that Apostle be humble when he talks to the delivery people. Y'all got me covered. All right, y'all, I'm confessing. Amen. The Bible said confession faults, didn't it? That's a fault that I have. So I need you guys to pray. Pray, up. Uh, Lord, make a apostle talk humbly to the delivery people if they mess up. Because I would want the Lord to deal with me humbly. Amen. Y'all know that. I mean, a couple months ago, look, a couple months ago, a couple months ago, I told the delivery guys, look, man, I was, I was just tearing a new one. Look, man, you come here and you've been, you come to my house more than once. What are you doing? He, he gave me a look like he wanted to jump. He looked at me through that window, held the glory, like he wanted to get out and handle some business. I said, oh, oh, what you want to do? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I did. I, I did. You know, I, oh, oh, what you want to do, man? Get out. And then my, my, my spirit said, shut up. <laughs> my spirit said, shut what you, shut up. And I did stop talking, but I didn't apologize. I should apologize. And he just drove off, and I walked back in the house feeling like a stupid, <laughs> like a goofy. I said, Lord, we sorry. Please let him come back so I can apologize. <laughs> y'all, because y'all know, in a moment of time, you'll be in the flesh. Mm-hmm. Don't, don't look to me like I'm the only one. Yeah. We'll be in the flesh, and we have to realize that it's not the will of God. So I'm praying from this day forward, it will never happen again. Are y'all here? Amen. Only person I'll deal with like that will be the devil himself. Period. Nope. No, I heard you from way back there. Hallelujah. Are y'all blessed? Let's give the Lord a hand. Praise. Come on, give, come on, give God a hand. Praise. Not for me. Not for me. For him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's stand. Yes, Lord.